Babatunde Ogala joins us. He's a legal practitioner. Good morning and thanks for coming on the program. It's my pleasure to be here. Good morning. You had catch Olunaju in his uh, submission. He was uh, there uh, at the sitting yesterday mm. at the tribunal and mm. his own belief is that uh, this is totally uh, selective by the government of uh, President Mohamed Buhari and he feels that it is uh, a witch hunt uh, on the Senate President. I, I, I listened all through to Mr. Kachi Ononuju, is it? And um, I think he was just not addressing the issue at all. Um, I've heard people talk about selective justice, persecution, and what have you. Look, be it selective or not selective, a charge has been put to you. Please go back, go there, defend these charges. For those who are saying it is persecution, put them to shame. Put your persecutors to shame by proving your innocence. When Alame Sega was impeached and arraigned, some said it was persecution. They said it was selective. The man pleaded guilty in court. Today we call him an ex-convict. Today we all condemn him. But at that time, these same people said, it was persecution. For me as a lawyer, why do I, whatever name you call it, I am not interested. Charges, 13 charges, 13 um, point charges have been placed before the tribunal. You have been charged of sundry offenses and breach of the code of conduct. All I would implore the Senate president to do is prove that you did not do this. Even though the, the owners, the body, it's on the prosecution to prove your guilt. So if they attempt to do that, you debunk them. Look, I listened to him yesterday. This is a matter of honor and morality. The Senate president sat in the dock yesterday and told the whole world that he was just becoming aware of that charge in the dock. He was becoming aware of the charges in the dock. He has been represented by lawyers since last week. So what were the lawyers representing him for? What was their brief? He had gone to the Federal High Court to challenge the competence of these charges, albeit wrongly in my view. He had appealed to the Court of Appeal and sought release from the Court of Appeal that were dismissed. You have been a representative in the Code of Conduct Tribunal. You have approached the Federal High Court. You have approached the Court of Appeal. And yet you come here and tell us publicly. But there were preliminary that, objections. So how could you say you were, what were you objecting to? Charges you do not know? Appearance and a bench warrant. <laughs> he had gone to the federal High court to challenge the competence and jurisdiction of the Code of Conduct Tribunal. So how can you charge, how can you go and challenge what you had not seen? Was it the federal High court in a vacuum? Was he applying for, when he made his party application and interlocutory applications? To seeking the leave to restrain the tribunal from proceeding with the charges? When he went to the Court of Appeal to appeal the issue of the bench warrant. So what were you appealing if you were not aware? You would just go to the court and say, oh, I was issued a bench warrant and I do not know what offense I've been, I was, um, I, was I, mean, I do not know what offense I had committed. I mean, it's a matter of honor now. Look, I think we should stop politicizing this issue. The same Senate president, the same Senate have said, the president has said, we are not involved in this. The same Senate had said, they believe the president. They have also said, they believe the president. They have said they have confidence in President Buhari. They have said they remain committed to working with him. So who is victimizing who? And on another breath, I'm hearing people say uh, there are elements in the presidency. Look, I think the issue is straightforward. If it is selective, it is persecution, it is whatever you want to call it, please go there and shame your persecutors. So you don't see anything wrong in the fact that, according to Mr. Nandu, there were about 18,000 complaints at the CCB, and if, only one was picked at random? Even if... Then we are picked. Even if there are a million, even if there are two, did you do it? Look, you're calling me. I mean, I've gone to do something wrong. They say I'm a thief. 
And I go there and say, oh, yes, I agree I'm a thief. But why are you not arresting Suleiman, who is also a thief? Did you do it? Defend your case and forget about I, I whether guess, there are a million. I, guess, I, guess I also what, have a... I guess, I guess that's what the Senate president uh, has gone there to do. He said that in his submission before yeah. uh, taking the uh, no guilty plea. Mm -hmm. But uh, a very quick one here. Your lawyer, you, yes. uh, the former governor of Belsa State, yes. can't be referred to us an ex-convict because he got the presidential pardon. Well, I said we referred to him. Okay, before the pardon. I chose okay, my so word. We referred to him. So I just Everybody wanted, condemned him. Yeah, I wanted, Everybody ridiculed him. I wanted to was it not persecution? Yeah, I wanted us to clear Was that. it not illegally removed but, as a, but, a governor? But coming back to this, uh, now we know he's not an ex-convict. He got the pardon. Coming back to this particular matter, uh, Mr. Ogala, recall that he was also saying something about not having the opportunity to answer, maybe to any kind of query for clarification sake see, he, he, with the CCP. Okay. Uh, now, going back to the act and how it is, uh, how the proceedings are done within the CCB, isn't that a very, very poignant, uh, you know, oh, look, point there? I have read that I have read section 3D Good. that I refer to over and over again. And what did you find? First and foremost, I must say I commend the chairman of the tribunal for his calmness and maturity. Your business was to take a plea, not to converse law from the dock. He started arguing on points of law. He started, well, let me not call it gallery playing. He, I mean, whipping up sentiments. What does Section 3D of the Code of Conduct uh, Borough Act say? Act. It says, if you receive complaints, please mark my words. Receive complaints. The Code of Conduct Bureau may choose. May. It's optional to refer it to the tribunal, provided that if the person accused of having breached the um, code is invited and makes a written admission, there may be no need to proceed to the tribunal if he makes a written admission. And that's what he's saying. That but provided that, that he, he, if, he, he if was this, not even written to it. He was did, not did, even did, informed. Did you, did you hear me? Did you hear me? Receive a complaint if you consider. If you consider. If the code of conduct considers, he gives it a discretion. Provided that if the person makes a written admission, there may be no need to proceed. But that's a problem now, because quite a number of people say that. <laughs> if the Code of Conduct, if the Code of Conduct Bureau, in his wisdom, considers it unnecessary, the law gives us a discretion, and you can exercise it in that way. If the Code of Conduct Bureau has decided to exercise the most extreme of its, you know, of, of options within its discretion, yes. doesn't it point out to the fact that there could be more to it than meets the eye? Well, I would rather not play on a... Uh, uh, I wouldn't want to go on the voyage of discovery to now start wondering, situating. Let us address the law. And what does the law say? Uh, I'm not interested uh, in what the intention of the investigating officer absolutely. is uh, biased. What again, does the law it brings, say?